Good evening, Mission Control. Well, sorry I had to take a few days off here from videos. Uh, it's been kind of rough. I'm um, actually starting to get sick again. Just been working too hard and going too long. And we're getting to the end, though. Uh, getting to the end. The light at the end of the tunnel, it's there. Uh, so I've been working on the design for uh, the cooler that's going in the back of the delivery vehicle, the Expedition. Um, it's been CAD work, computer-aided design, been uh, designing the whole thing in the computer, and I'm glad I, glad I did it. Uh, originally, I had actually just sketched everything out here. Uh, this is my notebook here, so I have everything sketched out, uh, all my design uh, constraints, sizes of everything that go inside of it, a few different options here, wiring diagram, uh, everything, and I started getting into it and I really just said, you know what, this this is why they made CAD, <laughs> so you don't have to guess all this stuff. And I had a nice Excel spreadsheet put together trying to calculate all the different sizes and shapes and everything that go into this. Uh, and I finally just said, you know what, I've got CAD skills, so I'm going to go ahead and use them. So uh, I'm going to take this video to kind of show you everything I've done. Um, I am not a CAD expert. I am not proclaiming to be a CAD expert, so um, there's people out there who know a heck of a lot more about CAD and the right ways to model things, and uh, I am the person uh, who just knows how to do it, and I'm going to get it done uh, so I can get a good enough answer and buy my parts or build my parts that I need. So uh, let's stop talking and jump into this. Here we are inside of CAD. I'm using a program that you can download off the internet. It's called FreeCAD, which is a nice 3D modeler. Um, I think the team for for what it is it's free this is a very very powerful program uh, I've come to discover that it has its uh, uh, inadequacies it has some challenges with it but overall it works pretty good uh, one of those is when it comes to assembly um, in CAD you can actually put everything together which is what I've done here I've actually built all these pieces individually and then I assembled everything together uh, very much uh, exactly like you would have to do in the real world and this has been very very beneficial to me uh, so I can see how things would go together or not go together or be the wrong size like let's say right here where I was about an inch off <clears throat> in my measurements uh, when I built this uh, so I have a little bit of overlap so pretty cool but anyway uh, its assembly uh, workbench is definitely a little wanting um, this one particular bar here, it's supposed to be laying flat right here and it's supposed to be connecting to these little connectors right here. And uh, it just doesn't want to stay there no matter what I do. I spent hours on it. Okay, well, let's back away from that and kind of get into the design. So, uh, kind of, let's throw it there. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Start and rotate on its own. So you can see, I think the right thing to do as far as material goes and installation, lightness, uh, and robustness is to use a product from uh, company 8020.net which was recommended by a subscriber. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a very cool product. Uh, each of the cross members shown on here are aluminum and then in between them are some heavy duty plastic uh, brackets. This is not like cheap plastic. These are really heavy, heavy duty uh, connectors that you slide the uh, aluminum tubing over and it secures it. It's essentially they they market it as the erector set uh, for adults type of stuff. Um, so you can see here we have a nice shell uh, and then the shell has uh, the pink foam that's uh, that is the rigid insulation that will be connected uh, into each one of these uh, particular uh, cross members so these cross members come with flanges on them uh, so that you can actually connect things to it we can screw that in uh, with some flat washers uh, to spread that out and really connect this in pretty well there uh, so <clears throat> really like the 8020 product that's pretty nice well you know I like it to design with anyway so this is all to scale everything in here is to scale uh, this right here is the back of the vehicle and there's going to be a door here. I just didn't model it because I spent two days relearning how to do CAD and I was pretty frustrated by the time I was all done. Uh, and I know the dimensions uh, that go inside of there so I just need to order those. 
Uh, then we come, this is driver's side. There's going to be a door here uh, that can be accessed through the door that's right behind the driver uh, in the vehicle. And then on the front, here, kind of zoom in and tilt it here so you can see it. Uh, here we have foam panel, foam paddle. This is the air conditioning unit that is going to be converted to the refrigeration unit by the use of a really neat device called CoolBot. I'm going to put their link in the uh, the description so you guys can go there, but a uh, pretty cool product. Uh, it essentially tricks the air conditioner into running longer so it gets it colder. Um, here we go. You can see in there. This is going to be a battery unit. Uh, got about I think it's a 125 amp hour battery and then we have an inverter here now this battery uh, is going to be connected to the alternator of the vehicle and then the inverter will connect to this battery and we're doing that so that uh, if there's ever a situation which we couldn't really think of where you would have the air conditioner running for you know more than an hour um, off of the inverter um, you would kill the battery in the vehicle and uh, we don't want to do that so um, to make sure that we have maximum flexibility I have in the design a battery here uh, inverter connected to this battery instead of the vehicle battery and again this goes to the alternator so when the, the vehicles on this battery is being charged now remember this air conditioning unit will not be running all the time uh, and it pulls 6.2 amps uh, when it is running and this inverter uh, is plenty big for that size it off of Amazon uh, so uh, the re this little black thing right here this is a metal sheet uh, that I'm gonna put in the front here uh, so that if there is an accident that metal sheet will hit the back of the, um, the one will hold everything together here and two it'll hit the back of the chairs uh, and not allow any of this stuff to uh, go forward. Uh, speaking of retention, uh, I didn't put it in the model, but basically here, 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 and here, there are going to be um, seatbelt connectors. There's four seatbelts in the back of the vehicle. I went back there, tested each one of them, uh, and we're going to slide this thing. So this is from the vehicle, this is the back, this slides right in. Uh, it should go right in no problem over the top of the seats that are there and then we'll connect the seat belts into this so that if there is an accident um, it's not going to be able to go forward uh, it'll have four seat belts so it'll be uh, we'll, we'll call it double redundant but there's an argument that can be made that it's three times redundant since um, you'd have to have three or four seat belts fail if you had three of them fail, you'd still have one that would hold this thing uh, from going forward. So uh, we'll have four connection points here using the seat belts in the vehicle right now uh, to connect this up. So let's take a little peek inside here. As far as storage space goes, there we go. So here the air conditioning unit, um, it's got about 14 inches of overhang that comes out um, and then is just suspended underneath is open, uh, this side will be closed, this side's closed, the top will be open, this will be open. And then for exhaust, uh, this hot air coming off of here is right next to a window in the summertime. So in the summer we just crack the window and that hot air will go right outside and you get some nice flow there. And in the winter, you won't have to turn the heater on in the vehicle. <laughs> uh, and then six inches uh, hangs out into the actual uh, cooling unit itself inside the foam and I'm leaving a little gap it's kinda hard to see it here there it is right there it's a little gap right here that extends all the way through um, kinda again, hard to see, see down in there with the foam on there but um, that actually extends through so it gets a little bit of air sucked in there I'm gonna leave that there uh, so that it's not completely airtight and inside of this, we got gray metal or uh, plastic crates. Uh, these are, what are they? I think they're, yeah, they're 16 inches by 24 inches by 13 inches. And we can fit uh, eight in the back and one up here. And you probably get another one in front of the air conditioning unit, but that would block the airflow. So you can get nine in here comfortably. And, uh, you can put some extra stuff in between. You see there's a gap here, so we can use that for the non-air um, 
clamshell uh, deliveries is, or we can put bags in there and just have it loose. So we've got quite a bit of storage space in here um, for where we're at. Now this vehicle, um, remember we kind of went back and forth over different vehicles. You can go back and check out that video. But uh, it's not the full size vehicle that we will eventually need. And we knew that. Uh, so we spent as little money as we could to get a four wheel drive vehicle that had as much storage space as we could get. Uh, so we can deliver as much as we could and the expedition uh, was what we went with. Uh, that's what we could find. So getting this thing in there uh, should be pretty easy. Knock on wood. Oh, scared the dog right there. Hey, it was just me. It's okay. Um, oh, I forgot to say, and here's the cool bot. It's going to mount along the back. I'm going to put a little aluminum sheet down uh, on the outside and drill the holes through and uh, pin that to it. Uh, and this little thing, it's inside of the unit. Uh, you set the temperature that you want in here, and we just need like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, keep it really nice and chilly in there so we can do deliveries. Uh, should work out. So, oh, the floor, going to have a wood floor uh, with linoleum over the top of it uh, just to keep it uh, all cleaned up and watertight. Um, I think that's it. So there you go. I uh, got the initial design done. I'm happy with it. Uh, I've sat here and looked at it for the last few days, spent a lot of time in front of the computer assembling all this. Um, you can go on to 8020.net and check out their product. I'll, I'll try to remember to put that in the description for you guys. Coolbot will be in the description as well. You can see that. And then the foam board is just going to be half inch rigid foam board. Um, we don't have to have the same. This doesn't need to be like the Yeti of uh, um, the coolers, you know, it doesn't need to be airtight, any of those things. All we need is a few hours worth of the ability to keep it cool with active cooling uh, while we drive around town and make the deliveries. Uh, hopefully we can get a distributor and then we won't really be driving around town. We'll be like driving to the end of the driveway and meeting the truck. Uh, we got a really long driveway. So um, anyway, that hopefully that's what happens. But if not, you know, this is... This is a good setup. I think I'm going to be happy with it. So curious to know what your guys' thoughts are. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to try to get done here. i got to design and CAD the uh, drying rack tonight for uh, the microgreens. Um, I know, uh, when I forget the subscriber name, but you talked about if I were to cut a cross beam and then I could lay a flat uh, piece of material down on top of what we have right now and pull it over to the um, uh, packing station that would make it easier and that is a good idea it's certainly filled with logic and not bad um, but there's some reasons why we're not going to go and do that uh, first we're working legally uh, to try to get everything from the drying station everything before the packing station we're actually trying to get labeled as raw agricultural product zone and everything after that we're going to have to label as food zone and we can't let things cross between the two zones in an uncontrolled way and that would be an uncontrolled way. Um, so we would have to clean that whole grate before it came over it is an example. So uh, another problem is just cleaning of the, uh, the material itself. We're having a big problem with the microgreens falling in between the grate uh, and uh, it gets stuck in there and if you touch it at all it kind of gets really stuck in there. So you spend quite a few minutes of unnecessary non-value added time uh, trying to get these microgreens out of the mesh. So we're going to move away from the thicker mesh uh, like what I, you've seen in the videos and go with a much smaller uh, food grade uh, what is it? Um, commercial, what is it? A food drying rack, you know, like a dehydrator. Dehydrator, that's what it is. And they make a plastic that can go in the dehydrator. It's a nice fine mesh uh, so water can still get through but it's not going to let the microgreens through. Uh, Totally food grade, so we're going to get that galvanized steel out of there uh, and be set up there. But i got to dry the whole thing up, and uh, I think we're also going to go with a flippable rack system, meaning you put them down, and then when you're done with everything on this top, you just flip it over, whack, 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 whack. Everything falls down to the catch basin that we have, and you just vacuum that off. I think that's what the plan is, but I'm going to draw that up. Uh, and see how it looks. So thanks for following along. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of CAD. It is fun to do. 
Uh, and it's not too hard to learn, but uh, if you haven't done it in a while, you got to relearn. So uh, two days of my life and I won't get back, but it turned out nice. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. We appreciate that. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I want to say too, uh, before I go, the uh, shooting in Las Vegas, just absolutely horrendous. Um, uh, that it's, it's, uh, it takes words away. Uh, it's very hard to even describe. Uh, my thoughts, our thoughts and our prayers are with the families and friends uh, who lost people or even just were impacted by that event. Um, that's totally not cool. And as a patriotic American, a uh, former service member and a Christian person, I, uh, it angers me uh, that people would do that. Um, geez, just uh, to take life like that, it's horrible. Anyway, uh, if you were impacted by that event, I am so sorry. And uh, definitely is not, not good. So I hope you can make it through it. This is a real Martian. Somberly. Out.